Before we start the new video, here's an update on Betsy from our previous video, one week post-surgery. So we're back at the tank with our Gorami and you can see right here, here, his nose is healing up well. Uh, we did some histology uh, testing of the lump because we didn't, we want to make sure that it wasn't mycobacteria, um, which is in another video we've shown. And in fact, what the lump was, was actually from a uh, outgrowth of, a, of the nose. It was a, a nasal uh, tumor, so some sort of a carcinoma of some sort. Um, yeah, uh, surgically I guess we didn't get all of it, but hopefully with a free spray it's got some penetrative ability. But we'll keep a close eye on him, see if the lesion grows or not. Hi, my name is Dr. Richmond Lowe and I'm the fish vet. Today we're faced with a problem. We've got about 30 goldfish in this pond. Uh, no new introductions of plants or fish or anything of that sort for over a year. Uh, but over the last week, uh, we've had a few fish present with skin ulcers, excess mucus, dropsy, and as well as death. So we've had six deaths already in the last week. We've tested the water quality. Ammonia nitrite nitrate was zero. Carbon hardness was at five degrees. pH was between eight to 8.5, uh, which is quite high above the optimal range, but it's not likely to cause any problems. And we can expect that the pH would be high, even though it's a plastic lime pond. Uh, all this is limestone or concrete. So when the rain pours down, it's just going to flow in and raise the, the carbonate hardness and, and pH uh, in that way. So now we're going to investigate um, by taking gill biopsies and skin mucus scrapes and check that down the microscope. Now let's take a gill biopsy. Yeah. The gills are quite pale. Let's give it a scrape. So I might get you hold on to them here. Yeah. I just put the slide down the microscope. Mm. And let's have a look down here. This is the um, mm. gill biopsy. Mm. Um, they're quite anemic, so they're probably losing quite a lot of blood because mm. it's not very red. Uh, but then if you have a skin, look at the skin mucus mm. scrape, you can see yeah, stuff moving. Yeah, yeah oh. so these are um, skin flukes, oh, no. and there are quite a lot of them. You see they're actually running away. Yeah. Uh, but it's not a difficult thing to treat. Okay. Yeah, so we'll treat them. We've got um, several choices. Okay. Uh, I guess trichloroform, formalin, and Prezi Quantel. Mm -hmm. uh, because the pH of your pond is quite high, the trichloroform is not likely to work. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, we can use Prezi Quantel. Mm -hmm. And because they've got big ulcers on the body, yeah. they'll probably be losing a lot of body fluids or body mm -hmm. salts and um, absorbing a lot of fluid that yeah. gives them probably the clinical sign of dropsy, the mm -hmm. swelling and the scales protruding. Mm -hmm. Ooh, check out this little guy. He's got the worst ulcers of the group, so I'm going to have to give him some special attention. I'm going to apply some fish bandage as well as this betadine antiseptic. Together, they're going to create a barrier that will prevent bacterial infection setting in. This will help him heal a lot more quickly and make him feel a lot more comfortable. So, we found a heap of mucus and a heap of skin flukes down the microscope. So what the course of treatment uh, in this case will be Preziquantil, uh, five milligrams per liter. And we're gonna do it twice because it's a very planted um, pond. So even though a single treatment should suffice, just because it's heavily planted, there are probably ways in which the uh, parasites could evade uh, the treatment uh, by hiding in some vegetation. What we're going to add as well is vitamin C to improve the immunity with wound healing as well. 
and we're going to treat the ulcers because it's likely going to be secondary bacterial infection with trimethoprim sulfonamide. Before we treat with the antibiotic, we always take a uh, sample for bacterial culture if we need to, in case the antibiotic we're using is not working because with freshwater fish, there's a high likelihood that there's multi-drug resistance. It's just something innate in the type of bacteria we deal with. We're also going to add some salt. Uh, we're going to use 2 grams per litre of salt. And the reason for that, we normally use 5, but because we're relying on the plant filtration to keep the ammonia and nitrite down, while we're using, especially while we're using the antibiotics, which will harm the biofilter, uh, we don't want to harm the plant. So we're going to use a maximum of 2 grams per litre of salt. Uh, that's going to help with the osmoregulatory challenge especially due to the skin damage that they've sustained so that we maintain the fluid in slightly better balance so the fish is not going to become waterlogged due to the hypo-saline environment that they live in. it up. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe to get updates of our videos and have a fantastic week.